Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Eleanor Hawkins, and welcome to Tell a Story Time. Easter is here, and this is the Sunday of joy. All Christians everywhere rejoice that Christ is risen. They fill the churches with flowers and music. They all dress in their Easter best. They go to church and visit friends. Long ago, before there were Christians, people celebrated in honor of Estra, the goddess of spring. That is where the name of Easter comes from. They celebrated the rising sun, the budding flowers, the coming of the long, warm spring days. The story of the rising of Christ from the grave, which is called the resurrection, which means that we open our hearts to love and joy in the same way that the flowers and the budding trees open to the sun. Easter eggs. Since a long, long time ago, as, no, as anybody knows about the egg, has stood for springtime. The season of new birth, when the flowers come up, the leaves on the trees come out, and the baby birds are born. For Easter to make the eggs bright and gay, we color them all the colors in the northern lights, which in some parts of the world make the sky shine just like the rainbow. Bunnies don't lay eggs, but they do have many children, and so the story grew up that the Easter rabbit brought the eggs and often hid them about the house for all the girls and boys to find. And that, boys and girls, is from our heydays and holidays. And now I want to read our first story, which I've chosen for this morning, and it's entitled, Nine Rabbits and Another. One night in early spring, as the rabbit family began getting ready for bed, they heard a knock, knock, knock at their little grass green door. But Mr. Rabbit said, someone is there. Well, now who do you think it is? Whispered the seven little rabbits. Is it company or a strange wild animal? Their father told them, I will go myself and see. So he walked across the floor, thump, 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 in his garden shoes and opened the door a crack. There stood a tall, scraggly rabbit with bent over whiskers and kind, tired eyes. His ears looked wilted, his suit was old, and he had no hat. On his arm he carried a big basket with its cover fastened down. Good evening, said Mr. Rabbit. Oh, good evening, said the scraggly one. You couldn't take me in for the night, could you? Oh, I have come a long way, and I still have far to go. We haven't a single extra bed, I'm sorry to say, Mr. Rabbit told him. You can see for yourself how many there are of us, my wife and myself, and seven children. That makes nine. Our house is full, just plumb full. The tall, scraggly rabbit scratched his head and looked up at the sky. That's bad news for me, he said. It looks like bad weather and I'm tired, way down to my toes. But if you don't mind, I would like to lie down in your little front yard. You have some nice dry grass to stretch out on. Are you sure you'll be all right? Oh yes, thank you, and good night. Good night, said the rabbit family all together. They had all been watching and listening, and when the door was shut, Mrs. Rabbit said, poor thing. Yes, it is too bad, said Mr. Rabbit, but what else could we do? We are quite crowded as it is. Nine rabbits in this small house. Another one that's just too many. The children ran to the window. Now he's lying down, they said. He's put his head on a stone. Their mother thought a minute, then she told them, I think I do have, can make him more comfortable with a pillow. I can spare mine. And she took it right out to him. Why, thank you, he said. Now my head will be as cozy as a bird in a nest. Mrs. Rabbit looked pleased. That was very kind of you, my dear, Mr. Rabbit said when she came back into the house. The children were still watching from the window. Now he's scattering grass all over his legs, they said. Only not enough his long feet stick out. The smallest rabbit giggled at this, but the older one said, don't laugh. He's a poor scraggly rabbit without a bed. Grass ridding doesn't make a very good cover, said their father. I have three blankets on my bed. I could spare one. So he got a nice thick blanket, 
with pink fuzz all over it and took it out to the rabbit in the yard. The scraggly rabbit sat up so suddenly that the grass scattered in all directions. Oh, why, thank you, he said. Now I shall be as snug as a root of a tree. Mr. Rabbit was smiling. Mrs. Mr. Rabbit was smiling when he went back into the house. That was very nice of you, my dear," said his wife. Then the children called out, "Oh, it has begun to rain! Drops are coming down on his face, and he's wrinkling his nose and opening and shutting his eyes. May we take him the big red umbrella out to him?" Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, my bunny, said their mother. Hurry it right out to them, said their father. So the seven little bunnies rushed out the door in a clump, carrying the big red umbrella. The scraggly rabbit put it right up. Oh, thank you, he said. Now my face will be as dry as a pebble under a mushroom. When the little bunnies came back into the house, they looked delighted. Now he is all fixed for the night, said Mr. Rabbit, with a pillow and a blanket and an umbrella. But while they watched, the scraggly rabbit dropped the umbrella. The rain dribbled down on his face. The family all hurried to the door and called out, The umbrella, the umbrella, you let, it, you let go of it. The scraggly rabbit opened his eyes quickly. Why, so I did, he said but how can I remember to keep on holding the handle when I go to sleep? Now, none of the family knew what to say to this. Then Mrs. Rabbit suggested, well, now, why don't you come in and sleep on our floor in front of the fire? There is a good thick rug, and you can still use the pillow and the blanket. And in the house, you'll not need the umbrella at all, smiled Mr. Rabbit. So very soon, the rabbit's family company was stretched out on the floor with his basket beside him. He looked up at them happily and said, Now I am as n nicely fixed as a turtle in a shell. I know I shall have a good night's rest. Thank you. You are very welcome, said the family all together with a bow and a smile. Then they all went to sleep. Soon the little house was quiet. There was just the sound of the fire dying down and the rain on the roof. But when the family got up the next morning, their company was gone. The pink fuzzy rabbit, the, the pink fuzzy blanket was neatly folded up. The pillow was on a chair. But why didn't he say goodbye, asked the little rabbits, looking disappointed. Well, he probably had to leave early. He said he had a long way to go and he didn't want to disturb us, their mother told them. But, but he might have said thank you. Oh, now he did that, said their father. Why, he thanked us very nicely for each thing that we did for him. Well, well, he might have left a note or something, said the next to the littlest rabbit. But just then, the very littlest rabbit gave a happy cry. He did leave something, look on the mantel. And there on the shelf, above the fireplace, was a row of nine lovely little green baskets, all tied with yellow bows, and each one was filled with candy eggs. Mr. Rabbit looked surprised. Why, that fellow was the most famous rabbit in all the land, the Easter Bunny himself. And we didn't even suspect, said Mrs. Rabbit. Well, now, we could have asked him in right away. If only we had known, said the oldest rabbit. But Mrs. Rabbit smiled. Oh, it was better this way. I'm glad we made him cozy by our fire, she said. Later on, they all sat down to eat the eggs that the Easter Bunny had left. The littlest rabbit of them all took one little rabbit nibble and clapped his paws happily. Mmm, he said. Isn't this candy just dandy spandy? The other rabbits who were much too busy to talk, just smiled, which meant that they certainly agreed. And that, boys and girls, is the story of nine rabbits and another. And now stay tuned, and we'll be back in just a moment to show you my collection of Easter eggs. And please stay tuned.
Boys and girls, I've been collecting Easter eggs for a long time, and I have some very special ones here in my Easter basket. And I want to show you my most special egg, which is a ceramic egg that my mother made me many, many years ago. And I think you can see the Easter Bunny holding a big Easter egg. It's very special. And next, I'd like to show you this one that actually has Mother Goose on the egg in a very pretty pink ribbon. Can you see Mother Goose? There she is. And then, this is a, one of my special eggs. You see, it is a crocheted egg, and it has lace all around it. And on the top, the lady who made this has violets and a rose. A beautiful, beautiful Easter egg. And then I brought different kinds of eggs. This is one, a Russian egg, and you can see all the different paint that they use, and they do it in layers. And sometimes that egg will have eight layers of, of designs intertwined. This is a beautiful egg, and it is wooden. And then this is an egg that I colored. Uh, we color eggs every Easter Eve at our house and our family all has a good time. And this is one that I covered, I colored and I do a multiple, multiple eggs. These are the only kind of eggs I like to color, make all kinds of designs. And then here I have an egg that is a wooden egg and I won't do it here on the air, but as you open it up, it has about five different little eggs graduated down to a very tiny one. And then I'll have to be careful that they don't roll off. And then this is an unusual egg. Somebody knit this egg and I have them in different colors. They knit an Easter egg. And then last of all, I wanna show you one that isn't very bright and cheery, but this is an egg that was made out of a out of wood, and you see the beautiful grain makes it design. Yes, boys and girls, these are my Easter eggs that I enjoy every Easter time for many, many years. And now stay tuned, and we'll be back with another story in just a moment. And now, boys and girls, let me remind you, be sure during your Easter break to visit any of the libraries in the Craven, Pamlico, Carter Regional Library System. Have a good time reading during your Easter break. And now, let me read you the next story. It's entitled, The Jolly Bunny Book. There's lots of excitement in Bunnyland just before Easter. The Jolly Easter Bunny has all of his helpers hurrying and scurrying to fill hundreds of baskets for children all over the world who must have Easter baskets on Easter morning. First, the Jolly Easter Bunny makes a long, long list of all the boys and girls all over the world. And the jackrabbits and the cottontails pull the wagons filled with very special eggs from specially fine hens. The birds bring flowers and ribbons for the baskets. The ducks hold the eggs in their broad, strong bills. They dip the eggs into pots of bright colors. The chickens draw funny little pictures on the eggs with their sharp, pointy beaks. Mrs. Easter Bunny, with the help of the five little girl bunnies, make the chocolate eggs, the chocolate bunnies, the yellow sugar eggs, and the white marshmallow ducks. The month, I turned two pages, sorry. But the most wonderful eggs of all, Mrs. Easter Bunny's big white sugar eggs with pink and blue sugar ruffles and pink and blue sugar flowers. Mrs. Easter Bunny always puts a little window at one end of the wonderful eggs. On Easter morning, when you, pick, when you peep in the little window, you can see a tiny garden and a tiny house exactly like the one where the Jolly Easter Bunny, Mrs. Easter Bunny, and the five little girl bunnies live. 
The month before Easter is a busy week before Easter is busier. But the night before Easter is the busiest. That is when Mr. Easter Bunny's whiskers begin to twitch. When the Easter Bunny's whiskers twitch, that means he is worried. He worries because he is afraid he will make a mistake. Now one Easter, which is the night before Easter, a long, long time ago, the Easter Bunny did make a mistake. That night he ate his nice carrot and lettuce salad, and then he went into his room to dress. And just as he does every Easter Eve, the Easter Bunny tucked his great-grandfather's big gold watch into his flowered vest, took his high silk hat from the shelf, his white kid gloves from the dresser, and he picked up his magic walking stick. Oh, how wonderful you look, said Mrs. Easter Bunny as she fastened a flower in his lapel. Now here's your list, and do be home early. Then the Easter Bunny kissed Mrs. Easter Bunny and the five little girl bunnies goodbye. He called to the cottontails and the birds who always help him deliver Easter baskets, and off he went with a wave of his magic walking stick. The Easter Bunny, the cottontails, and the birds traveled all night long. Around the world they went, stopping at every house where a little girl or boy lived, until finally they came to the last house. The Easter Bunny sent all of his helpers home and went into the last house. And what do you suppose he found? Twins, a girl and a girl twin and a little boy twin. And the Easter Bunny had only one basket left. How could he have made such a mistake? The Easter Bunny thought and thought. He looked in the basket. In it were two marshmallow ducks, two chocolate rabbits, 24 jelly beans, and one plain yellow egg. He looked at his magic walking stick. Well, of course, he said to himself, my magic walking stick, that will do the trick. The Easter Bunny took his magic walking stick, waved it three times, and said the right magic words to himself. That will turn the one yellow egg into two yellow eggs, the Easter Bunny said in a very soft whisper. But you know, it didn't. The most dreadful thing happened. The plain yellow egg went crack, crack, crack. It's breaking, oh, cried the Easter Bunny. Crack, crackle, crack, the egg went again. The Easter Bunny did do a hop and a skip for joy. My magic worked after all, he said. Well, maybe not quite the way I expected, but it worked. The Easter Bunny then knew that the twins would love their twin chicks and there was enough of everything else in the basket. The Easter Bunny has never made a mistake since, and Mrs. Easter Bunny knows that he never will again. Nevertheless, the Easter Bunny always worries on Easter Eve, and that is why his whiskers switch. And that is the story of the Jolly Bunny Book. And now stay tuned, and we'll be back in just a moment with another story just for you. And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read you this story, Rosinka's Eggs. Babuska lived alone in a little house in the country, but she was known far and wide for the fine eggs that she lovingly painted. Her eggs were so beautiful that she always won first prize at the Easter festival in the city. Each day, Babuska would take the shell of an egg from her basket and paint it in wonderful designs using the shapes of stars and flowers and triangles and circles. Through the long cold winter, Babuska painted, and one day, after a big snowstorm, she went outside. And just then, a flock of noisy geese honked loudly overhead as they glided over the snow. One of them faltered and fell from the sky. Babuska went to where the goose lay all crumbled in the snow. 
She carefully picked up the goose and took it back to her little house. There she fed the little goose from her own table and put the goose in her best basket lined with the warmest quilt from her own bed. I shall name you a good name. How do you like Rosenka? And then Rosenka it shall be, she said. With Babusa's care, Rosanna grew stronger as each day passed. To repay her kindness, Rosenka laid an egg for breakfast every morning. As Rosanna got better, she waddled around the little house looking in every cupboard and corner. One day she jumped on top of Babusa's work table, overturning the jobs to all the jars of bright colored paint that she had used to color the eggs. No, no, Bagusa screamed as she chased the goose with a broom. No, no. The frightened goose flapped her wings to get away and knocked over the whole basket of eggs that Bogusa had so lovingly painted. The eggs crashed into the floor and shattered into many pieces. Oh, they were both very sad. There was no reason now for Babuska to go to the Easter festival. The next morning, Babuska slowly got out of bed and hobbled over to Rosinka's basket to get her morning egg. But when she reached into the middle of the quilt, she picked out the most brilliantly colored egg that she had ever seen. Oh, a miracle, Babuska whispered, a miracle. She made small holes at both ends of the egg and blew the yolk and white into a dish to cook and eat later for breakfast. And after that, every morning for 12 mornings, there was another egg, each more beautiful than the one laid the day before. Soon Bubuska had enough eggs to take to the Easter festival in the city. She wondered a miracle had replaced her broken eggs. And spring is here, my little friend, Bogusa said the next morning at breakfast as they ate their Easter bread. My little friend, I shall sorely miss you, but you are a wild thing and a miracle sent you to me. It would, be, it would not be right to ask you to stay here forever. When Babuska left her little house, she looked one time back at Rosanna. She waved and then she went on toward the city. Now she arrived at the city, and there the Easter festival was bright and exciting. The eggs are the most beautiful in all Russia when she showed them to her old friends. Look at them, the elders cried. They almost glow as if the paint is part of the shell itself. The judges picked Babushka's eggs as the most beautiful, and she was so happy, and she received a beautiful feather bed quilt. When Bogus arrived at home that evening, Rosenta was gone. All alone, she put the new quilt on her little bed, and then she had supper and went to bed with her favorite book of poems and drifted off to sleep. And then all of a sudden, she heard something. And when she looked, there was, there was, the, there was Rosenta's basket. And then she looked at it carefully, and it quivered and moved. And a tiny muffled sound came out. Then there was a crack, and Babuska could see the very special gift that Rosenta had left her. A miracle, she said, because there was a baby goose. And this little goose remained with Babuska always. And that is that old Russian tale. And now, boys and girls, I have about 30 seconds here to read you here comes peter cottontail here comes peter cottontail hopping down the bunny trail hippity hopping easter's on its way bringing every girl and boy baskets full of easter joy things to make your easter bright and gay he's got jelly beans for tommy colored eggs for sister sue there's an orchid for your mommy and an easter bonnet too Oh, here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail, hippity hoppity, happy Easter day. Here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail, look at him stop and listen to him say, try to do the things you should. Maybe if you're extra good, he'll roll lots of Easter eggs your way. You'll wake up on Easter morning and you'll know that he was there when you find those chocolate bunnies that he's hiding everywhere. 
here comes Peter Cottontail, and we'll look for him tonight. Happy Easter from all of us at Tell a Story Time. Till next week, this is Eleanor Hawkins saying bye-bye for Tell a Story Time. <laughs>